additional resources unless you want to. They are completely optional. Once you have completed your reading assignment and followed along with what it says to do, um, every lesson has a knowledge test, which is a quiz. On the knowledge test, you get two attempts and there's no time limit. You get a random series of questions. So what I would recommend is as you are completing your lesson, start the quiz first. There's no time limit. The, the knowledge tests are intended to be formative learning. They're not meant to, to challenge you in the sense where you have to show mastery and, and you don't have to be perfect. So the questions are meant to pull out key information in the lesson. So what you can do is you can start the lesson and the knowledge test. And as you are completing the, the activities, you can look up the answers. You should complete the lesson thoroughly, but you don't have to, you don't have to complete the lesson, close the lesson and then start the quiz. It's open notes. There's no time limit. Um, and then you get two attempts. So after you take the first one, um, you will know which questions you got wrong and you can take another attempt. The quiz will not tell you what the correct answers are until after the due date passes. So if you're someone that works ahead, let's say that you do lessons one through six in week one, you're not going to know what the answers, the correct answers are to um, lesson six until after the lesson six due date passes. So keep that in mind. Um, what I would recommend, and I recommend this every semester, but nobody ever really takes me up on it, is as long as your first attempt is on time, I consider your submission to be on time. So if you take your, your quiz and you get a 7 out of 10 on it, do not immediately retake it because the due date is approaching. Instead, I would like you to come visit me during online office hours and we can review the questions together. I won't tell you what the answer is, but we can look up the answers together and we can work through the questions together um, so that you know what the correct answers are. However, please keep in mind that the questions are pulled from a database. So Whitney and I put maybe 15, 20 questions into a database. You will get a random 10 questions. So you should, you should continue to study the lesson. But before you move forward, we should review the questions you got wrong so that you know why they're wrong and what the correct answer is. Okay, after you do your knowledge test. So um, the knowledge test uh, is gauged to assess your kind of knowledge-based learning of Photoshop, like terms, definitions, things like that. When you move on to the next assignment within the lesson, it is a skills practice. It's set up as a discussion board, and essentially this is to test your Photoshop skills. So the knowledge test is for the knowledge-based terms, definitions, things like that. And then your hands-on Photoshop will be tested during your skills practice activities. And just like the knowledge test, the skills practices are designed for knowledge building. Um, they're not meant to, to show mastery or perfection in any way. They are your opportunity to play and to try and to experiment. The first three, four, five of them are very, very structured where every single person will probably have the same submissions, but eventually the skills practices become creative. And so instead of like for this one, you're going to launch Photoshop and upload a screenshot. Eventually, you will be doing custom artwork and you'll be showing off the custom thing that you made. So in order to keep things consistent, every single skills practice will be submitted through a discussion board, even though the first four or five of them, they really don't need to be a discussion because you're just submitting the same generic thing that everyone else is. So keep that in mind. When you get to, I think it's lesson six, is the first time you'll have the opportunity to create something unique and your own and you'll get to see how the discussion threads are really meant to be for uh, R1280. The skills practices are graded based on either basically pass, fail, or partially complete. If you don't do it at all, you get a zero. If you do it and it's perfect, you get a, get a full point. Um, if you do it and it needs improvement, but you clearly have tried thoroughly and done all of the requirements, you still get all of the points, even if it's not right. I will comment and tell you what needs to be fixed. If your submission is incomplete, you'll get 50% and you will need to fix and resubmit your skills practice. Let's go back to the modules. So that's the same thing that will happen for every lesson. Lessons one, two, three, four, five, and six. At the end of the unit, so after, in this case, after you finish lesson six, there's a finishing up module. There's a page that says, this is what you're gonna do. Make sure you read it. 
you will have a creative project. So your creative project is equal to your skills practices. Skills practices are formative learning. You're learning how to use Photoshop and you're practicing. When you are testing your Photoshop skills, you'll do it through a creative project. So we call this summative learning. After you do your creative project, which you submit just to me, because I'm going to collect your files and check your files. The next activity in the module is called creative project show and tell. And this is kind of our version of having a critique. It is a discussion board where you can post your artwork for the class to see. And you could say, look at the cool thing that I made. Um, we do not do intense critiquing in Art 1280. I just want you to share your work with the class, tell the class a little bit about what you did to create your artwork, and then pick out somebody's project that you really like and let them know that you like it and what you like about it. After you've done your creative project, which tests your Photoshop skills, the last thing that you'll do inside the unit is to take an exam. And the exam is equal to your knowledge test. So knowledge tests are two attempts, unlimited time, uh, they're meant to build your knowledge. The exam is designed to assess mastery. So you get one attempt, you only get 75 minutes, and you need to know the answers. So what I recommend is before you take the unit exam, go back and review all of your lessons, but go back and specifically review all the questions that you solve on your knowledge tests. If you didn't use both attempts, let's say you got 10 out of 10 on the first try, take the knowledge test again because you might get different questions that you can use for practice. Study that and then when you're ready you can take the exam and the exam test your mastery of terms and definitions and, and key skills that you'll be using in Photoshop but it's all knowledge based. Okay <clears throat> the last thing about that before I go to the orientation unit is that my late work policy and I probably should have reviewed this on the syllabus is that all work is expected to be submitted on time. It is in your best interest to get it in on time because we have this super short semester and things are gonna be a little chaotic. Um, but I do understand that um, it's an online course and it's easy to kind of get behind and I do not want anyone to get behind and think that they can't get caught up. So my late work policy is I expect work to be in on time. Any work that's late will be docked 10%, whether it's a day late or a month late put a little asterisk on that month, um, and I will accept late work while we are still working on the current unit. So when a unit ends, you have seven days from the end of that unit to get your late work turned in, except for unit five. So the orientation is due on Wednesday, May 18th. The last day to submit any late work for this will be Saturday, May 28th. So you actually get more than a week. Um, but for unit one, unit one will end on Saturday, June 4th. You have one week from then to get any late work, any outstanding late work for unit one turned in, um, and everything in the unit will lock on June 11th. So you get you get a couple of weeks to turn in less than one late, 10% off whether it's one week late or three weeks late. Um, but when we get to the end of the unit, when you have your exam due, you have seven days from the time the unit ends to get any late work in. Um, I do this so that you have the oh crap moment and get caught up five times throughout the semester instead of waiting until the last day and then not having enough time to finish. The only exception to this is that unit five, we will finish our course on Wednesday, August 3rd, and then you have until Friday, August 5th to get any late work in because uh, SLCC has all the courses set to lock on the 5th. So that's the last day to get any of your work in. And then I'll grade over the weekend and I'll post your grades on Monday, uh, what, what would that be, August 8th. Okay, let's walk through the orientation unit together. I'm going to go really, really fast because I want you to read it yourself. Um, remember I said there's tons of information in the orientation unit. I don't expect you to memorize all of it and that's okay. Uh, what I want is for you to have a general idea of what you're doing and then I want you to make a list of the things that you find important but also know that you can always come back and reference the orientation if you have questions. So every unit, every module starts out with like, what are you gonna do in this, in this unit? So that's what this page is here. The first page is, um, is a welcome to the course, an overview of getting started. It talks about the course, it talks about how I'm really bad at 
answering emails, which I've already talked about. Um, so you can read through that. A lot of this you should be able to skim because I've talked about it in this video. Um, there are steps for getting started, which was what I'm talking about right now. Um, it goes in complete detail. It's one of the things that the college kind of asks us to do. Um, it talks about how to navigate the course. I have already talked about that. The only thing I didn't um, kind of explicitly say is we call these the navigational tabs, the vertical column on the left-hand side. So if I say the, the chat tab or the Zoom tab or the modules tab, I'm talking about this column over here. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, navigating the course talks about the idea of a unit. I already talked about there's an introduction, then there's lessons, and then there's a finishing up. Um, it kind of shows that sample unit from the different semester. Um, but one thing I didn't talk about in detail was grading for our course. Grading for our course is great is based on each unit. So in a lot of courses, you might have grading categories that say your homework is worth 10%, your exams are worth 50%. That's not how our course is set up. Every unit is worth a certain percentage of your grade. So unit one, because it has the most lessons, is worth 25% of your grade. And unit two is worth 22%, and unit three is worth 16%, etc. So no matter how many things are inside that unit, if, if there are 100 points in the unit and you get 80 points, then you get an 80% for the unit, which means you would get 80% of 25. So whatever that happens to be. I know that's a, that's a little weird, and I'll talk more about it as, as we progress through the semester. But keep in mind that every unit is worth a certain percent. So if you have a 100% in our class after unit 3, and you decide you're not going to do unit 4 or unit 5, your grade will be lowered by 32%. So the highest grade you can get if you don't do unit 4 and 5 is 68% uh, in our course. Which then brings me to the last thing uh, for this page is in order to get an A in this course you need a 93% or higher and if you notice the grading breakdown I don't live, like to give minus grades. I'll give a, an A and an A minus because um, the majority of students will get a B plus, an A minus, or an A. But I don't live, like to give B minuses or C minuses or D minuses. I just find it confusing especially with C's. So in order for a class to count for a prerequisite, you need to have a C grade or better is what people will say. Um, when they say that, you need to have a C or better. That doesn't mean a C minus, a C or a C plus. It means a C or a C plus or higher. So I just don't give C minuses. So you'll see the, the grading breakdown there. So if you're someone that's trying to get B's, you need to get an 80 or higher. If you're someone who wants an A, you need a 93 or higher. If you're someone that just wants to pass and you want to see or higher, you need a 70 or higher. So keep that in mind. Okay, the next page in the course talks about expectations of taking this class online. Um, what I usually will explain in detail is that, you know, online classes are right and wrong depending on who you are. This class is a great class for certain types of students, and it's a horrible class for other students. If, if online is right for you, take the course. If online's not right for you, I will not be offended if you want to switch into an on-campus section. But you really need to read through this page to and answer the questions honestly that are presented to really think about it. Online learning requires self-discipline. It requires proactive um, logging in and getting coursework done. Um, it requires you to get your coursework done before the due date. So if something goes wrong, you can come and ask for help. Um, asking for help two weeks after something's due is not going to be sufficient. I don't get to be in a classroom with you for this course. I don't get to, to see that you're struggling with, with the lasso tool and come over and give you personalized attention. In an online class, if you're struggling, you have to ask for help. The teacher can't, can't magically see it. They don't know if you're just not logging in or if you're struggling with the content. So really kind of take this page as a heart to heart. If you decide that you want to take this class on campus, we are offering an on-campus version this summer. It starts, um, I think it's a Tuesday, Thursday class. And it starts, um, I guess it would start if it's a Tuesday, Thursday class, it starts on uh, May 17th. And I believe it runs from 10 a.m. until 1.10 p.m. at the South City campus. And there are seats available. I think it's only half full. So if you'd prefer to take this class on campus, please, by all means, um, I will not be offended. Um, do what's right for you. Okay, the next page, if I remember correctly, talks about technology for the course. 
So this page goes through all the technology that you may use for the course. Um, to summarize it in 30 seconds, you need a computer that can download Photoshop, and you need a, the ability to install your software, to open files, and to do basic computer things without me explaining how to do that. And then you also need the ability to use either Google Drive or Dropbox or um, Office 365 to upload files and embed them on a website. The instructions for our course are going to demo Google Drive. I know that Salt Lake Community College no longer supports the free account through the college, but you can make a personal account and use it. So my demos will be for Google Drive because I think it is the best option, but you don't have to use Google to submit your artwork. You can use uh, Dropbox, SLC360, any file sharing website that will allow you to upload files and also embed artwork on a website. Um, there are resources for the help from the college for generic things like like study skills and things like that. But what I want to point out is that if you're struggling with the Adobe software, the the college offers or the visual art and design department offers help. We have a student tutor. I do not know what their hours are for the summer because they change all of the time. So if you're interested in tutoring for Adobe, you need to call the department office at 801-957-3042 ask them about the Adobe, it's this tab here, ask them about Adobe tutoring and see what hours the lab is open this semester and what hours the lab is open for tutoring this semester. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over these. You can read them if you're an undecided student. Um, Salt Lake Community College is doing a new program called SLCC Pathways to help students find a program of study. This, um, this course is in the arts communication and digital media area of study. So you can read more about what that means here. Specifically within the arts communication and digital media area study, Art 1280 is a visual art and design course. So if you're kind of undecided and you would like to know more about other programs that use Photoshop, um, you can read this page here. Again, it's for undecided students. There's kind of a FAQ if you wanna know like, oh, I wanna study visual art and I wanna transfer. Well, the only two transfer options we have right now are the Animation AS degree and the Graphic Design and Communications AS degree. So if your goal is to transfer, um, then you need to choose one of those two. If you want to enter the workforce, all the programs that we offer are listed here. And if you click on the links, it will go to their website and you can learn more about it. If you are completely undecided and you have questions, I am happy to answer your questions. I am a full-time faculty member in the art department. I specialize in graphic communications, but even that, even then, I can help you. So if you're interested in web design, I can flip your email over to the web design instructor. Or if you're interested in illustration, I can flip your email over to illustration. So if you need help, let me know, and I will point you in the right direction. Okay, so the last thing you're going to do before you start submitting your orientation materials is you are going to read this chapter. It's the first chapter in our book called What is Image Manipulation? Essentially, it's your way to practice reading the book to see kind of what the book looks like, the, the way that we speak, um, so that you are prepared for the book that we wrote. Um, so there's a couple things you can do here. If you click these little three dots, you can enter full screen mode. And you can read, use your arrow keys, and you can read through the book. If you want to download it and save it, you should be able to, oh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm thinking of InDesign. Um, if you want to download it, you need to click on this link that says Google Drive. It will take you to the folder that all of the, the chapters are saved to. You can then, this is a, what is image manipulation? You can then open the slideshow and you can choose to download it. You can print it, you can do different things, you can save it to your Google Drive. What I would do is I would just bookmark this page here because the reason Whitney and I use Google Drive is because if we have to update a screenshot or an instruction because Photoshop changed, we update it on Google and it automatically pushes to all of the courses. So keep that in mind. So this is just a way to talk about kind of what we're gonna do this semester a little bit, but also let you test using the Google slide to see if it's workable for you. Once you're done, so those are all of the reading assignments. Once you're done, there are a series of submissions that you have to make. 
So you need to download and install Photoshop and there's instructions here to do that. You will take a quiz that essentially says, were you able to download it? You can just say yes. And then more importantly, if you're having trouble, you can ask your questions so that I will see your, an your questions and be able to answer them. The next activity is the Getting Started in Art 1280 quiz. And what I recommend is before you even start getting started this semester, open the announcements tab and read the announcement that says unit 00 questions to answer. This announcement will tell you all of the questions that will be on that quiz. So as you're working your way through the orientation, you can answer them so that when you go to take the quiz, you already know the answers. There is a discussion called introduce yourself to the class since we're going to use discussions for every single skills practice from lesson one through lesson 19. I want you to make sure that you can use this, the discussion during the orientation unit. So make sure you read through the instructions here. You are going to have to embed a picture and create a zip file and attach it. The instructions are included on this page and then you can post. Oh, someone from your class has already posted. So we'll have to check out and see why they're, uh, our picture's not working, but I want you to use the introduce yourself to the class discussion as a way to test and make sure you can get all those things to work in a discussion so that when we get to lesson one, there aren't any issues with submitting um, the skills practice. Okay. What is next? There is an assignment called the initial response assignment. Essentially, I want you to, to hit submit on this. And I want you to tell me either you are comfortable moving forward in the class or you're not and you have questions. Any questions you have, write them in here and I will answer them. I'm going to check the initial response assignment every single day, multiple times per day for the first two weeks of the semester so that you're getting a response to me for your questions as soon as possible. The last assignment is a profile picture. I would like you to upload a profile picture. You don't have to submit anything for this. You're just going to go up in the top left hand corner and choose your profile and upload a picture. I just ask that it's a picture of you and only you and it's a professional picture. Um, don't do a group photo, don't do a cartoon. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose. The reason I want the profile picture is so that I can see you and recognize you. Um, if you do a group shot or if like you're standing on the top of a mountain from miles away, um, it doesn't help me recognize you. If you're not comfortable with that, the assignment is worth a nominal number of points. It's not worth anything. It's not going to affect your grade whatsoever if you choose not to do this assignment, but you will get a zero. I think it's worth five points. Okay, and then the last page in the orientation just says you're done. You can move on to unit one. So to recap for week one of the semester, um, you need to complete everything in the orientation unit, and then you need to move on to unit one and complete the getting started um, section of the unit plus lessons one and two by Saturday. Um, it's definitely doable, but it definitely is gonna take several hours to complete. Okay, good luck.